Such a morbid imagination. Bringing dead things to life. She's scared. There's someone coming. I want to go. What happens when it takes on a life of its own? At the start of the movie, we see a stop-motion animator named Ella Blake. She's working on a stop-motion film, and her mother Suzanne is guiding her from behind. After checking her work, Suzanne tells her it's not right, and they need to do it over. During dinner, we learn that Suzanne has arthritis in her hands, so Ella helps her with her meal. Ella then offers to help her with some ideas, thinking it might be useful. The next morning, when Ella comes downstairs, she finds Suzanne already there waiting. Susanna asks Ella about her idea, but Ella finds herself unable to say anything. That evening, Ella meets her friends in a bar, and there, Reed, Ella's boyfriend's sister, shares their stop-motion work with the whole group. Now, when Ella's boyfriend is driving her home, we find out that Ella is working on her mother's film because Suzanne's hands are getting worse, and Ella has promised to help her with her last film. He asks Ella if she doesn't want to make her own films and find her own voice to which Ella responds that she doesn't have her own voice. The next morning, when Ella serves breakfast to Suzanne, she doesn't help her, and this leads to Susanna struggling to eat on her own. Later, Suzanne tells Ella that her only wish is to complete the film before she dies, and asks Ella if helping her is such a burden. Afterward, Suzanne begins instructing Ella angrily, and then a light starts flickering. However, Suzanne tells Ella to ignore it and get back to work. She instructs Ella not to move at all, and then, due to a short circuit, the lights go off, plunging the room into darkness. Ella uses the flashlight on her phone and discovers that her mother lying down, and as she approaches her, Suzanne suddenly attacks her. The next moment, we see Suzanne admitted to the hospital, and the doctor informs Ella that her mother has slipped into a coma. Later, while at Tom's house, Ella sees her mother lying on the floor, and as Suzanne looks at her, she transforms into flesh and bones. Suddenly, Tom interrupts and tells her that she can stay at his house for as long as she wants and that she shouldn't return to that place. A few days later, at Ella's request, Tom helps her temporarily move to a new apartment in a building that they are gutting soon, and while carrying her luggage, Ella encounters a girl on the stairs. Later, while setting up her studio, Ella hears a girl singing a song, and when she goes out to check, she finds some people moving out of the building. Later, the girl visits Ella, who explains her work to her. She shows her a model of Mrs. Cyclops, which has an armature inside, like a skeleton. She demonstrates how she makes a film by moving the model again and again, and clicking it picture. The girl asks Ella why she does it, to which Ella replies, because she likes it and it feels like she's bringing something to life. Ella explains that the movie is about a cyclops who traded one eye with the gods to see her destiny, but she ended up seeing her own death. The girl finds it a bit boring, and when Ella asks her how she thinks she could make it better, the girl suggests creating a new, more exciting story. She tells Ella a story about a girl in the woods who is scared because she is lost and someone is coming. She then asks about a thing in her hand to which Ella explains that it's called mortician's wax, which is used to fix up the faces of dead bodies for when the families want to see them. The girl suggests that Ella should definitely make a girl from this. Later, we see Ella in the woods, and when she wakes up, she hears Tom's muffled voice. Then, she discovers her Cyclops models broken on the floor, and to her surprise, she finds her setup changed into a wood scene with a girl's model in it. Confused, she checks her laptop and is shocked to find a film in it, exactly like the girl's story. The next day, Ella's friend Red visits her to see if she is okay. Ella shows her the project, which Red really likes and suggests that this might be good for something they are doing. After Reed leaves, the girl visits Ella again. Ella shows her the clip, but the girl says the model doesn't look real. She brings out a piece of meat from the kitchen and asks Ella to make the girl out of it. Initially, Ella rejects the girl's idea, but when the girl insists a lot, Ella agrees. The girl continues the story that the guy runs away through the woods, 
and she finds a house and hides in it. Ella asks, who is coming for her? To which the girl responds that it's a man no one wants to meet, and he comes on three nights. And then, the model of that man is also revealed. Ella asks, what they should call it? To which the girl puts some cigarette ash on it, and Ella names it the Ash Man. Later, while on a call with Tom, she tells him that her sister visited today, and then she asks him if it would be okay if he doesn't tell his sister what she is doing. Now that night when Ella is trying to sleep, she hears some sounds. She comes out to check where she meets the girl who takes her with her into the woods and tells her that Ash Man needs to be made out of something dead. She shows her a dead fox and tells her that they could make an arm trowel with the bones, wrap them in skin, and give them teeth and a tongue. Ella flatly refuses to comply, but the girl tells her that she won't reveal the next part of the story. When Ella asserts that it's her film, the girl asks what happens next, and then, she leaves, saying to carry on without her. Ella returns home and attempts to continue on her own, but she finds herself unable to do so. Later, she goes to the bar again, where she meets Reed, and asks her for drugs, thinking that maybe they might give her some ideas. After taking them, she returns to her house with the girl and the dead body of a fox. She uses its skin and flesh to make a new Ashman and replaces it with the old one. The girl then continues the story that on the first night, the girl is in the house and the Ashman is coming. She tries to hide, but he sees her. Ella sets up the scene and just as she begins to record, the buzzer in her house goes off. Perplexed, she comes out to check and to her horror, she sees a man ascending the stairs who resembles the Ashman. Terrified, she rushes back to her apartment, and when she tries to look out from the peephole, she is horrified to see a demonic eye staring back at her. Later, when Tom wakes her up, she tells him that she saw him. Confused, he asks her if she took something last night, to which Ella takes out the packet, saying she didn't touch it. She then tells him that the man from her film came and looked through the door. Tom helps her to get up and shows her that she animated it herself. And seeing it, she tells him that she wants to leave. Next, we see her taking a shower at Tom's house. And during this, she feels like her skin has turned into mortician's wax. But the next moment, it returns to normal. Later that night, she abruptly wakes up and finds herself paralyzed. And to her horror, she watches the girl from her film climbing onto her bed. The girl walks towards her, and in a horrifying act, she rips into her thigh. The next day, realizing that Ella isn't sleeping properly, Tom tells her that whatever she thinks she saw back there, it's not real. Then, he makes some jokes to lighten her mood, and suggests her she should just go out tomorrow and do something. However, we see that she is distracted by the girl sitting on the table behind Tom. Ella goes to the washroom, but the girl follows her and asks her if she doesn't want to hear the next part of the story. Ella asks her to leave her alone and says she doesn't want to make the film anymore. However, the girl continues the story saying the second night he touches her. Ella decides to join Reed's company, where Reed introduces her to her director Brett. Brett informs Ella that they have got a crowd scene tomorrow for a toothpaste gig, and they need a hundred eyes. Ella says she thought she was animating, to which he says she is not. Next, we see her rolling eyes, and the other guy tells her that he saw her mom's films at the university, saying it must have been amazing growing up in that environment. Afterward, as she wanders, she stumbles upon Reed's preparation area, and is shocked to find Reed working on her story. Reed explains it's not exactly the same, but when Ella becomes upset, Reed mentions she intended to compensate her financially. This angers Ella further, prompting her to start damaging the set. However, Brett steps in and escorts her away. Later, in the hospital, Ella is clicking photos of her mother by moving her hand again and again, when suddenly Suzanne says it's a wonderful medium, bringing dead things to life. Ella says she must take after her mom, to which Suzanne says she can't because she can't control it. She says she is a puppet, caught in her own strings, and if it isn't her pulling them, it's somebody else. But when the puppets are done with their play, they are put back in the box. When Ella returns to her apartment, the girl continues the story, saying that on the second night, Ashman returns and touches her. However, Ella disagrees and insists that the girl escapes. The girl says she can't change it, 
To which Ella responds that she can, because it's her film. As Ella begins working on her film, she is startled when her working table starts to shake. Perplexed, she gets up to investigate, only to witness the lights in her house flickering. And to her horror, she watches as a human-sized Ashman emerges from her setup. As she attempts to flee, her legs break, prompting her to fall, and we see her transform into a doll. Now, as the Ashman approaches her, she rushes and seeks refuge inside a crack in the wall. Suddenly, the Ashman tries to reach her, prompting her to dash towards a hole in the wall. However, as she attempts to exit, she discovers a strange room on the other side and realizes she's stuck in the hole. She crawls back out of the hole, and the Ashman approaches her, reaching out to touch her face. Then, he spits something resembling an egg out of his mouth, picks it up, and proceeds to feed it to her. The girl then appears there and says, I told you so. Next, we see Ella in the hospital, where the doctor informs her that she was found wandering near her building, and asks if she remembers how she got the cut on her leg. Ella mentions that her head still hurts, to which the doctor then informs her that they are keeping her overnight under observation. As the doctor leaves, Tom visits and Ella tells him that she didn't do this on purpose. Tom expresses his concern and suggests that once she's better, she can return to creating things and they could even work together. Ella comments on his work, to which he gets frustrated and says he thought she was trying to work through something so he was trying to help her, but he just not doing it anymore. He says he is going to delete everything and throw it all away, but she stops him saying, let her do it. She agrees that this needs to stop and it's bad for her, but she started it so she needs to be the one to end it. Later, Ella's mother passes away, and when Ella goes to see her for the last time, the girl asks her if they are done here. They both return to her apartment to finish the film, where the girl tells her that the fox meat doesn't work as it's all dried out, so they should find something better and more bloody. Ella calls her over and asks her to sit, but suddenly she starts trying to kill her. After some time, when she feels that the girl is dead, she moves back. However, suddenly the girl asks her if she has gotten that out of her system now. Upset, Ella sits back on the couch, expressing her fear, and asks the girl what happens on the third night. The girl reassures her not to be scared and promises that it will be worth it. She adds that great artists always put themselves into their work. Afterward, we see many live clay models sitting on the couch. The girl removes the bandage from Ella's thigh, and Ella takes painkillers. Then, she begins to open her stitches one by one, after which, she starts to pry open her wound with her fingers. Suddenly, Tom and Reed arrive, and they are startled to see her actions. Ella tells them to leave, but Tom and Reed intervene and attempt to get her away from there. However, Ella knocks Reed by kicking her, causing her to fall, and subsequently shoves Tom down the stairs. She then redirects her attention to Reed, who attempts to escape, but Ella knocks her down again and then hits her with the tripod. Ultimately, she kills Reed by thrusting the tripod into her throat. Afterward, she approaches Tom, who pleads for her help. However, she covers his mouth and nose, causing him to succumb to suffocation. After this, Ella brings their dead bodies to her apartment and the girl says this is even better. She then asks her to cut the flesh from Reed's thigh to make the models for her film. After this, we see that Ella has created two new big models from their flesh, which are moving on their own. The Ashman starts advancing toward the girl, but unexpectedly, it shifts its attention towards Ella and starts moving in her direction. Observing this, the girl remarks that this isn't what happened, and Ella hides inside a closet but the Ashman begins pounding on the door, and suddenly it breaches the closet. Ella proceeds to remove the wax from her face and offers it to the Ashman, who begins consuming it. And then we see the Ashman devouring Ella. Next, we see Ella entering a house, where the girl is watching something on the laptop, and when Ella goes near her, she sees her dead body on the screen. Her focus then shifts to a crate nearby, and upon opening it, she discovers it resembles the same room that she saw through the hole when she was turned into a clay model. Ella settles into the crate and closes it. And the movie ends here. Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like, summon that subscribe button, and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, stay spooked.